Tristan, review number 17. I have an Indian single malt today from John Distilleries in Goa, India called Paul John Christmas Edition 2019. Some of you are probably familiar with Paul John if you know world single malts. In other words, single malts not from Scotland as they're commonly referred to. Uh, from other countries, even from here or Japan, India, a number of other countries, Australia. You probably heard of Amrut and a few other Indian single malts. However, Paul John is becoming more popular. However, it is definitely lesser known or at least has not been on the market as long. Paul John does some incredibly good single malt, non-shill filtered, no coloring added, just as it should be. And this is one of my favorite expressions I've tried in recent years. It is a limited edition allocated expression that comes out once a year around Christmas. And this one was aged for five years in ex bourbon casks and then two years at least in PX casks. So it makes it seven years old, more or less. This one is one I found for around $80. You'll find them each year for around that, um, give or take, between 70 and 90, I would say. But it's not in very wide circulation. And so if you see one, I highly recommend it. And let's just get right into it. Indian single malt is something that is very special. I have always had a huge appreciation for Indian cuisine. Um, any food that comes out of India, I love curry, I love Indian food. Their single malt is no different. It has a charm all into itself. Different than Scotland, you know it's single malt, but it definitely is something that, I mean, the fact that you get something like this with this much character in only seven years from India is pretty impressive. Now, keep in mind, India is a significantly more hot country from a very hot region of the world, as opposed to Scotland, which is arguably the antithesis, very cold. Uh, things are gonna age a lot slower. Things in India will age much quicker. So you can get a lot of character out of a single malt that's much younger than say your average scotch whiskey, similar to bourbon too. You, I mean, there's a lot of bourbons on the market around you know four years old, bottled and bond bourbons rise. Uh, it's very unusual to find four-year-old single malts unless you go to the independently bottled market in Scotland. And man, it is an enchanting single malt. Their whole lineup is fantastic. They do some peated stuff, some unpeated stuff, a little bit of everything. This malt is peated. However, that peat is a very meaty peat. I would describe it more as a Highland or Campbelltown style peat. It's not a big iodine heavy TCP um, Band-Aid peat like you would find with a lot of the Isla single malts like Lafroig and, and Lagavulin. This one is a lot more, uh, less medicinal and it, it, the, it's evident right on the nose. Think Springbank, that's actually what the peat in this reminds me of. It is Springbank single malt. If I had to pick something from Scotland to compare it to, a medley of dried red chili peppers. Really, really, really interesting. Something I don't often get in Scotch single malt. Big tropical notes, definitely some pineapple. There's hints of asphalt, which I would say is coming from the peat, and I find it really pleasant, as weird as that sounds, and as toxic as those um, fumes actually are after they lay down normal asphalt. It's a very um, vivid part of my childhood, just smelling that asphalt, I guess because of all the construction that was happening in the Bay Area. It, booming basically my whole life. That smell is, although I wasn't always around it, is very vivid, and I get that in this single malt. The technical term is polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and so that is actually what you smell when you smell asphalt, and unless you've smelled asphalt, you won't know what I'm talking about. Most people seeing this probably have, and you get whiffs of it in this. It's not too strong. Some people find that scent off-putting, but I definitely get it on the nose. Juicy PX Sherry. It interjects um, with vivid grape with the peat in a very harmonious way. Peat and sherry can not always work together. One can sometimes dominate the other. With this, I mean, it's like back and forth jabs like in a boxing match. It's just you get the peat and the sherry. Very, very unique. 
Really nice barbecue notes too. Some muscovado sugars. It's not smoky, which is interesting. Usually when there's peat, there's smoke. Not always, but usually with this, there's really no smoke on the nose, which makes it really interesting how you just can get the peat without the smokiness on the palate. Full body, 46% alcohol by volume. So it's 92 proof. And that is not strong by whiskey standards, but it definitely, even after being open for almost a year and a half, this whiskey drinks at a higher proof than 92 proof. And I really appreciate that. Tons of character. Barbecued meats, a sooty, peaty fire. So again, sooty, think like chimney soot from a fireplace. Not necessarily a bonfire, but just that sootiness you can smell from a chimney. There's some grape marmalade. Fire roasted chilies come back. I'm, I'm dead serious. It's, it tastes and smells like there's, after you've taken the remnants of the the chilies that would have been fire roasted and dried and used in some dishes and, and you take them out because you don't want to eat them because they're so hot. Uh, what those would actually smell like or even fresh ones before you even use them for cooking, the dried and, and all shriveled up almost, you can smell that in the nose and you can even taste it in the palate. You can taste the smell in the palate. Really, really interesting. Black pepper, paprika, some cardamom, a little bit of clove, it's sweet in certain areas, dry in others. Quite an adventure. I mean, this is really, uh, I would say, um, not to sound cliche, but the, the Eastern spices you can get from the single malt are very prevalent. Kind of like you would smell when you walk into uh, my favorite, uh, it's actually a Pakistani restaurant in Berkeley. They're, just the smell when you walk in from the Pakistani and Indian dishes that they serve, it, it's, it's something you can't really describe unless you've been there and I'm saying that from the point of view of an American who has never been to India and that's really all the influence I have on Indian food is going to an, an Indian or in this case Pakistani restaurant uh, those smells being so exotic to me and foreign I, I get some of those in this single malt one more the finish is long very jammy and that coming from the PX Definitely it's more grapey, um, just grape sherry. It's not a sultry, dark, um, tons of, it's not a tons of marzipan and, and tons of sweetness. It's more of a grape forward sherry. Um, the peach turns sweeter through the finish. It's lip smacking. I mean, it's just chewy. It's almost like the, it, you've got some of that grape marmalade dripping off your mouth now. Some purple and red grapes definitely pop up. More of that asphalt, um, the hydrocarbons, that smell, lingers on your tongue and around your palate. I know those notes may sound random, but it it really works for me. Now, some people might find that odd, being less well-rounded, you know, not having these plethora of orchard fruits and all these very distinct sherry notes, at least that I get from this. But I find it really pleasing. It, it hits, where it hits, it hits really, really well. There's really no dull moments to this. And I, I, again, I attest that to just the character of the single malt. It drinking higher than 92 proof, just tons of character from something that I would drink, I would say drinks more like 100 proof. If you get a chance, check out any of their portfolio. You can definitely find them in Bebmo, Total Wine, and a number of boutique stores. Usually we'll have some type of Indian single malt. In the Bay Area, I know most will have Paul John. And this Christmas edition, if you see any of them, this is the second one of the line, if I'm not mistaken. There's the fourth one will be coming out this year. They did one with Oloroso, this with PX. I forget what last year's was, uh, but I look forward to picking up a bottle if I can. Um, each year they do a different finish. So this second edition, if I'm not mistaken, was the PX. And each year the, they have a really cool labeling on the canister and i think it's really cool they do an homage to christmas and they offer this release around the christmas holiday i'm reading paul john 2019 christmas edition out at a 91.5 this is an absolute a whiskey i would love to see a little more age on some of them in the future and as soon as they have older stocks i'm sure they'll be releasing older single malts of course age stated single malts 
And with the Christmas edition, it would be great to see maybe a 10 year old, something like that, to have like a point of reference at what, you know, 10 years old is for them. I think that would be really cool. If you guys check out any of the Paul Johns um, and try them, please leave, leave in the comments what you think of them. I'd love to hear. Um, like the video if you like this, subscribe if you want to see more. Paul John, 2019 Christmas edition. Cheers.